we were once again reminded of just how brutal and dangerous the sport of boxing actually is with the recent death of British light heavyweight Scott Westgarth a few days ago. Boxing will never be free of these kind of tragedies. They're always going to happen, no matter how much you try and tighten up the medical procedures and all that kind of business. At the end of the day, you've got two men in the ring punching each other in the head repeatedly. So situations like this and other situations where fighters end up seriously disabled, they're going to continue happening. And the only way as boxing fans and people within the boxing fraternity that we justify the the existence of boxing amidst all these tragedies that happen within it is we say, well, for a lot of boxers, boxing is the best way for them to earn a living. They wouldn't be able to make as much money doing anything else other than boxing. We're not all equally talented. We're not all equally blessed. Not all of us have the ability to make a decent living working in business or whatever the case may be for some people their talent is boxing and that's the only way they're going to make any uh any kind of money they can realistically live a decent life on and on top of that boxing takes a lot of kids off the streets and steers a lot of people away from criminality so this is the way we justify our sport existing uh, professionally amidst all these tragedies that happen within the sport. So with regards to Scott Westgarth, clearly my condolences go out to his family and my condolences go out to the families of all boxers who are seriously injured or killed in a boxing ring. And again, this is why you have to respect these guys getting in the ring, putting their health and their lives on the line for our entertainment. Now I can't make videos about every single tragedy that happens in boxing because they happen all the time boxing is an international sport fighters are seriously hurt and killed in africa in asia etc they're just not as well publicized as the ones in the western world where the media is a lot more pervasive and powerful so you know i'm not going to be making videos about every single time a boxer dies it's always tragic obviously and I wish it would happen less but it's an occupational hazard it's going to keep on happening and it's something boxers understand when they sign up to become a boxer when they step in the ring they understand the risks they're taking you know and uh, it's just something that fighters do and it's something uh, as fans of course for me as a fan the best I can really hope for is that yes they continue to improved uh, medical procedures especially in other parts of the world where these kind of things happen more frequently so I, I hope they continue to improve medical procedures and I also hope that there is some kind of you know in time financial I don't want to say compensation but some kind of financial insurance for boxers who are seriously injured or even lose their lives. There needs to be some kind of scheme in place where fighters' medical expenses and stuff like that can be catered for. And if it's a boxer who loses his life, then the family can maybe be compensated for because of the fact that, you know, this individual may have had children that he was supporting or a wife that he was supporting or what have you. So that's what I hope for in future. It's not realistic to say, I hope nobody ever dies or I hope nobody's ever seriously injured in a boxing ring again. It's just not realistic. In the real world, we have to realize it's a dangerous sport. You've got two men beating in, beating each other in the head. These things are going to happen. It's not the last time, uh, unfortunately, people. That's the nature of this sport. It is brutal. Let's not try and sugarcoat it and make out that this is not a brutal sport. It is brutal. It is the modern day Coliseum. Thankfully, not quite as brutal as that but the same kind of principle, essentially. Yeah. Now, again, condolences to Scott Westgarth's family and every other boxer who has been seriously injured or lost their lives in the ring. 
with regards to the comments of Tyan Booth, I saw some of the tweets that Tyan Booth put out where he referenced the Scott Westcoff tragedy. I think Tyan Booth's comments were inappropriate and insensitive. But I'm not going to be up in arms about them, to be honest with you. Uh, he used the Westcoff tragedy in a very flippant and casual way. And again, that's why I see it as insensitive and inappropriate for him to be using and actually disrespectful to the family to be using the the tragedy in such a flippant way. But I'm not one of these people who gets up in arms every five minutes about something that somebody said on Twitter. You know, oh, I'm offended about this and I'm offended about that. And I'm, I'm not one of them kind of people. I'm not one of these, what do they call them? Screaming liberals. These are, uh, you know, fort police and these uh, people who just get upset about and offended about everything that somebody says on social media. Society today is being groomed to become more and more sensitive all the time. I think it's a very insidious thing. Personally, I think the social engineers of our society are doing this as a political policy. Every year, there is more and more things which we're supposed to be offended by. More terms that we're supposed to be offended by and all this kind of stuff. It's getting to the point where it's ridiculous. And you get people, a lot of people who actually actively go onto social media and actively scan the internet in the hope that they find something that's going to offend them. Now, they might not be thinking that on a conscious level, but on a subconscious level, this is what a lot of people do. They go on the internet, oh, well, I found something offensive. I'm going to make a big song and dance about it. I find this kind of behavior to be disturbing. I'm not one of them kind of people. There are loads of things that I disagree with with people about on the internet there are loads of things that people say that i might find offensive on the internet or wherever or in the political world or donald trump said this or this politician said that i just don't pay it no attention if, if there's an individual who i find particularly offensive in the things that he says i just don't follow him you know, occasionally i might address certain things that people say but generally speaking i'm not one of these people who gets wakes up every day and is looking for something to be offended by because if you're one of them kind of people you're going to be offended all the time and you're going to be unstable mentally you understand so yeah what Tayan Booth said was insensitive it was inappropriate and a touch disrespectful to West Goff's family but you know people say Tayan Booth is a strange man strange people say strange things and it's not the last time that you're going to read something strange or inappropriate on social media. These things are going to continue to happen. So, you know, especially the way that they're grooming people to be offended by more and more different things. They're grooming people to be extra sensitive. You know, it's, it's silly to me. But if you want to hear me talk about these kind of social issues... You can head over to my Patreon, sign up with me on Patreon, and you'll hear me talk about more stuff like this in greater depth and detail. But again, with regards to the Scott Westcoff situation, condolences to his family. Tyan Booth, strange men say strange things. Inappropriate, insensitive, um, etc. But, you know, <laughs> that's how social media is, people. People say stuff like that all the time. So, if you don't like it my suggestion would be don't be on social media because i'm not really on twitter and stuff like that i have a twitter account but i don't really use it you know and when it regards to facebook i talk boxing with people on there and that's it i don't really do nothing else because i'm not into this whole thing of trying to find arguments with people and trying to be offended by stuff i'm not into none of that there's loads of scumbags and horrible people out there who are going to say all kinds of different things on the internet. The best solution to dealing with people like that is don't follow them. Don't read their tweets. Don't go to their Facebook posts and all that kind of stuff. That's the best way of dealing with it, to be honest with you. Or else you're going to drive yourself mad. Yeah, you know it exists. You know that it's out there. Unless somebody is trying to incite, actively incite violence upon certain people, that is dangerous, but when people are giving their opinions, even if they're horrible opinions, 
you know, I mean, even if they are inciting violence towards people, if you think that they're going to act on it, you can inform the authorities if you think they're going to do something. That's a matter for them, you know. So anyway, <laughs> let me not go off into a completely different realm here, people. <laughs> if you want to hear me talk about that kind of thing, sign up with me on Patreon and I talk about that kind of thing all the time. But yeah, uh, those are my thoughts on the Scott Westcoff tragedy and Tyan Booth's inappropriate, insensitive and disrespectful uh, tweets because he, he didn't insult Scott Westcoff or his family directly. He just used the tragedy. He, he referenced the tragedy in a very flippant, insensitive way when it's still very fresh in, in people's minds and in the minds of the family, obviously. So, yeah. Anyway, let me know how you feel, people. It's happening. I'm out.